The first and biggest difference between kudo and archery are their purposes. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Out of many Japanese traditional martial arts, there is something called Kudo, which is one that uses the Japanese bow to train. Oftentimes, when Kudo is introduced to foreign countries, it is explained as the Japanese archery. However, technically speaking, Kudo and archery are very different. The only thing you have in common is that you use a bow and an arrow. So, today, as a man who has trained in Kudo for an year in the past, I will briefly explain the history of Kudo and then the five differences between Kudo and archery. However, I don't have much experience in Kudo, so I have received advice from my former instructor who has been training for more than 20 years. And even if you get confused somewhere during the story, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. So, let's go to the next one. First, let me briefly explain about the history of Kudo by breaking it down into three points. One, introduced as a ritual ceremony. Two, developed into a training method. Three, the survival crisis and kudo today. One, introduced as a ritual ceremony. The bow and arrow has existed from ancient times throughout the world. In Japan, too, there are drawings of people using bows and arrows on the bell shaped bronze vessel thought to have been used in the Yayoi period. The Yayoi period is from 300 BC to 250 AD, so it's more than 2,000 years ago. What was once a tool for hunting became a ritual ceremony performed at imperial courts from the 4th to 5th century, influenced by Chinese culture. It was meant to wish for a good harvest or to predict the luck for that year. This is why arrows called hamaya are sold at many shrines in the New Year's season. Do we have any fans of Inuyasha? They are good luck charms that are believed to remove any misfortune and bring happiness to your home. One of the five classics of Confucian scriptures, Laiki, or the Book of Rites written in BC China, has a description about archery and its ritual purpose. The idea introduced in this historical book is still written in the training books that every Kudo trainee must read. 2. Developed as a training method Coming into the age of samurai rule and the Kamakura period, the bow and arrow became a weapon used by the warriors in battle. Competitions like Inuomono and Kasagake as ways for training combat skills were actively performed by samurai. Today, this culture still exists as different sports, where we shoot deer-shaped objects made from grass instead. The techniques of bows and arrows evolved even more in the following Muromachi era, and many styles were born. However, in the 16th century, during the Sengoku period, the usage of bows and arrows in war gradually declined due to the introduction of guns. The purpose of archery changed from something used in battle to a method to train the mind and body, and the technique becomes more and more sophisticated. In the peaceful Edo period, Kyujutsu became the Kudo we know of today. Three. The Survival Crisis and Kudo Today In the Taisho and Showa period, Kudo was adopted for curriculums and club activities for secondary school and above. However, after World War II in 1945, Kudo, along with all other Japanese traditional martial arts, were banned by the US and faced a crisis 
of survival. However, just four years later in 1949, the All Japan Kudo Federation was established. And in 1951, practicing Kudo at schools was allowed again. I've made a video about the history of the two katana sword martial arts, Iaido and Kendo. They both faced a similar survival crisis, but it took a lot longer for them to resurrect compared to Kudo. From this fact, too, we can understand that although Kudo is considered a kind of Budo in Japan, the purpose is obviously not for attacking an enemy, but more of a spiritual meaning. Today, there are still many schools with Kudo club activities training the students. In 2019, the population of Kudo trainees who belong to the All Japan Kudo Federation was about 135,000. This is close to the number of people who train Judo in Japan, and slightly more than those who train Iaido. Then finally, let's get to today's main topic. What are the differences between Kudo and Archery? Let's break it down into five points. One, the purpose. Two, the bow. Three, how you handle the bow. Four, the clothes you wear. Five, how you compete. One, the purpose. The first and biggest difference between Kudo and archery are their purposes. Kudo is a martial art that involves spiritual training, and archery is a sport. That pursues accuracy. The shape of kudo bows have not been developed for a long time, and it is difficult to hit the target unless you're proficient in the technique. Hitting the target is not the goal, but the process of mastering the correct posture and the way to draw the bow correctly is the purpose of training. Archery has excellent tools with superior functions and high accuracy. And its nature is to hit the target. What's important is how to improve the accuracy by focusing and mastering the techniques to hit closer to the center of the target. In addition, kudo is sometimes performed at ceremonies, such as weddings, for its ceremonial purpose and the beautiful visual of drawing the bow. Also, from how you learn how to control your breathing. And always stay calm in any situation. Some people call kudo kizuzen, a way of practicing zen in a standing position. Two, the bow. The purpose of the two are completely different. So the bows that are used are of course different as well. The characteristic of the kudo bow is that it's a long bow, which is vertically asymmetric with a long top. And a short bottom. You hold about one third from the bottom of the bow, which is the ideal position where the recoil of the bow can be suppressed the most. They are made from bamboo or carbon fiber, or the mixture of the two. On the other hand, archery bows are vertically symmetrical, and you hold the center of it. It has evolved to increase the accuracy of the hit. So it is also equipped with various equipment, such as stabilizers, to assist the accuracy of the shot. So, as a tool to hit a target, the archery bow is much superior compared to the kudo bow. But again, this is because the ultimate purpose of kudo is not to easily hit the target, but the process of training yourself to get there. Three. How you handle the bow, because the bows are very different. How you handle them are also very different. Let's take a look at the three main differences. In kudo, the bowstring is drawn to the back of your ear, while in archery, it is only drawn to your chin. Also, in archery, you're allowed to cancel drawing the bowstring in order to redraw, but in kudo, you cannot. Even if you accidentally shift the position of the arrow while drawing, you will have to use your chin to replace the arrow and draw it till the end. This is because kudo is thought of as a ritual movement, so breaking the patterns and rules of the movement 
are a taboo. Lastly, kudo bows will turn around on a vertical axis at the time of launch, while archery bows will not. This means that it's impossible to shoot arrows quickly in a row with a kudo bow. Learning how to handle the kudo bow might be a little more difficult than you imagine. It will take a couple of months for those who practice kudo five times a week and half an year for those who practice once or twice a week before they can finally draw the bow towards the target. Before that, you will practice the correct form with rubber bows that look like this or the real bow but without the arrow. And even after finally being allowed to shoot towards the target, you will not be able to hit anything in the beginning. After another three to six months after shooting towards the target, you might finally be able to hit one out of four arrows. It takes one year at best, usually about two years, for the rate to exceed 50%. Surprisingly, no matter how many years you practice from there, the average hit rate is about 50 to 75%. So this means no matter how long you have trained, it is unbelievably difficult to be able to hit the target every time. Of course, to become a professional archery athlete, it will take long and hard practice. But to just draw the bow, a beginner can try it on their first day. While for Kudo, that is impossible. You will not be able to even touch the bow for the first few months. Four, the clothes you wear. If you have seen a video or a picture of someone practicing Kudo, you probably have noticed that they are wearing traditional kimono. Just like you train in Yaido, Kendo, Aikido and such, you must wear a dogi and hakama. Few things that are different from the other martial arts is that you also wear white tabi socks and women will have to wear a chest protector. The hakama was a kind of clothing that the samurai wore as a symbol that you are a person of the high class. But why do you have to wear white socks? Again, kudo has a stronger ritual aspect than the other martial arts. It is thought that being barefoot in a sacred place is very disrespectful. And white is thought of as a pure and clean color. This is why when you wear other types of kimono in special occasions, like weddings or coming of age ceremonies, you must wear white tabi socks too. While in archery, any kind of sportswear is fine. If you belong to a team though, you'll probably wear the team uniform. 5. How you compete Lastly, the way you compete in kudo and archery is very different too. In a regular kudo match, you draw 8 arrows towards the target that is 28 meters away and compete with the number of arrows that hit the target, which is 36 centimeters in diameter. It doesn't matter where the arrow hits. If it hits anywhere, it will be counted as a point. By the way, if the number of hits is the same between competitors, each will draw one by one alternately, and the one who misses the target first loses. There are individual matches along with team matches with three to five people per team, but the rules are the same. The team that hits the target more wins. In addition to the tournament, there is also an examination to see how much you understand physical constitution, shooting, and the history and culture of Kudo. If you pass the examinations, you will get a rank called Dan, just like the other martial arts of Japan. Archery changes the distance to the target to 30 meters, 50 meters, 70 meters, and 90 meters, and you shoot 36 shots at each distance. 144 shots in total. Wins and loses will be decided by the point system of how close the arrow is to the center of the target. If you had to shoot 144 shots in one game of Kudo, I think most of the trainees would be dead by the time it ends. 
And lastly, today's conclusion. The history of Kudo can be broken down into three points. One, introduced as a ritual ceremony. It is widely believed that bows and arrows have existed from around 300 BC to 250 AD. In the 4th to 5th century, archery became a ritual ceremony to wish for a good harvest or to foresee the luck for that year that took place at the imperial court. Two, developed as a training method. From the Kamakura period, bows and arrows became the main weapon for the samurai, and practicing archery became a way for the warriors to train their body and mind to reach spiritual heights. However, due to the introduction of guns in the Sengoku period, bows and arrows gradually disappeared from the battlefield, and it became the Kudo we know of today. 3. The Survival Crisis and Kudo Today Kudo faced crises of survival along with the other martial arts after World War II. However, it was soon established as a school education for students. There are five main differences between Kudo and archery. 1. The Purpose Kudo is a martial art that is meant for spiritual training, while archery is a sport that pursues accuracy. 2. The Bow the Kudo bow is a long bow, which is vertically asymmetric with a long top and a short bottom, and you hold about one third from the bottom of the bow. The archery bow is vertically symmetrical, and you hold the center. As a tool to hit a target, the archery bow is overwhelmingly superior compared to the Kudo bow. 3. How you handle the bow. How much you pull the bowstring, whether you're allowed to redraw the bowstring, and whether the bow turns around after the launch, are different. 4. The clothes you wear. In Kudo, archers will wear a dogi, hakama, and tabi. Women will wear chest protectors. This is their formal clothing that is meant to be worn for ritual ceremonies. 5. How you compete. In a Kudo match, you draw 8 arrows towards a target that is 28 meters away and compete by how many arrows hit the target. While in archery, there are targets for several distances, 30 meters, 50 meters, 70 meters, and 90 meters. You shoot 36 shots at each distance, 144 shots in total. You compete by how close the arrow is to the center of the target. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understandings towards the history and culture of Kudo, please hit the like button to let me know. And my goal is to achieve 100,000 subscribers by January 2022, so your help is what I need. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Dawa, arigatou gozaimashita. Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video and welcome to the Omake Talk. So in the beginning of today's video, I said that I used to train Kudo, uh, Japanese archery, for about an year, right? Um, I actually, so right now, I train in Iaido, the katana, tea ceremony, sado, and no theater. And I train in these three things. But actually, I've tried out quite a lot of things, um, including Kudo, I also tried out Kado, which is the flower arrangements, and Shodo, which is the calligraphy, and also Aikido as well, actually. And I wanted to talk about why I ended up, you know, not continuing the other things and decided to continue the three things I am continuing right now. So for Kudo, um, the problem with me, actually, it's something that um, is a, it's kind of like the same reason why I quit the other three as well, but um, I have very, very clumsy hands yes. and the problem with it's not just the problem with my cl clumsy hands I don't like any kind of you know what should I say detailed work I should say that requires like precise movements on my hands it's really difficult you know because well the tea ceremony 
And of course, the dancing in the no theater, the katana does require you to have, you know, do detailed work as well, of course, but, you know, it's more of your, like, a whole body, how to control your whole body, and your hands are part of it. In kudo, um, if you're a practitioner of kudo, you probably know, but, you know, for example, the bowstring that kudos have, uh, kudo bows have, you have to actually make it yourself. You know, have, you have to make part of the bowstring thicker so that the arrow be more stable. So you need to have glue and you have to add more strings to it to make it thicker and such. All these, you know, these detailed works makes me crazy, I guess. It's the same with shoto calligraphy, you know, all the the, the precise movements, you know, and, this, and, and those are really, really difficult for me. And for me, kado, the flower arrangements, I love watching people do it and I love what they love flowers yes for sure they're beautiful you know they make the atmosphere really nice and that's really good I love it but personally I guess my wife is a web designer but I'm not really like the I'm not an you know artist if that makes sense you know I realized that too once I tried and for Aikido I really did love doing Aikido but I guess it was simply a problem of how much time I had. I was doing it when I was still working at a company and I didn't have as much time as I do now. And you know, I realized that I do love Iaido a lot more. So there's really nothing bad about Aikido, it's something that I didn't like about it. I just simply wanted to use more time in Iaido, so that's the reason why I couldn't continue. But I really am thankful that I tried everything, you know? It did give me a lot of experience, and yeah, if you have a chance to come to Japan, I hope you can try a lot of things out too, and you know, kind of discover your new self, I think. That'd be a lot of fun. All right, thanks so much. And by the way, um, as I was editing this video, I, I thought, you know, um, I'm not like, I don't know anything about, I know about a little bit about Kudo, but nothing about archery. So I hope if you have experience in archery, if I said anything like wrong about, you know, the descriptions about um, archery in this video, please let me know in the comments. I apologize in advance. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita. Sore mata.